school safety agents. And we are going to be talking about the wonderful career opportunity of being a school safety agent. Before we get started, I'd like to uh, give uh, Ms. Simpkins and Mr. Wise two minutes to introduce themselves, their background, uh, tell us a little bit about um, who they are, and uh, then we'll get started with the workshop. We'll start first with Ms. Simpkins. Hello, everyone. Good to How are you? School safety agent. I've been a school safety agent for 16 years. I've been in elementary schools. I've been in conjunction pre-K through eight. I've been in um, high school, impact high school. I've also been in District 75, which services children with special needs. I've also done District 79, which is alternative sites for alternative education. Uh, I'm a mother. Uh, I'm also a veteran. I'm also a miracle maker. I'm a whole lot of things wrapped up into one. I'm a fighter and I'm a rebel. And here with my partner, Harry Wise, to basically, you know, talk about this opportunity, this career opportunity, this, this job that we do that's now currently looking for people to fill slots and, you know, tell people basically what this job entails, what this job is about, you know, what the impact that this job has the school community as well as the whole entire community and what the benefits and the qualifications and all the different aspects are that it takes to keep and maintain this job. So I'm happy to be here. Hello. Thank you, Ms. Simpkins. And uh, Mr. Wise, if you could please introduce yourself. Yes, hello, my name is Harold Wise. I've been on the job for close to 20 years. I started out in the Bronx. I've worked in, like Ms. Simpkins, I've worked in every part from PS schools to high schools to District 75. I've uh, transferred over to Staten Island for like the last few years, working in outreach. Um, I also run an Explorers program and I run a after school program on my own called Be Yourself. That's a mentoring program in uh, two different high schools out on Staten Island. And maybe down the road, I'll see if we could get it spread out to different uh, commands because it's ran through with the school safety agents that's doing the mentoring for the students. So like uh, Ms. Simpkins said, we're here to educate and tell people what they have to look forward to when coming into school safety. Thank you, Mr. Wise and Ms. Simpkins. So, um, you know, I want to get right into it. Um, so many of you know, the NYC School Safety Coalition uh, was founded a few months ago in response to um, the false misleading attacks on our school safety agents who keep our children safe every day. And one of the, one of the biggest um, misleading statements that I just call an outright lie is the fact that school safety agents are police in our schools. School safety agents are civil servants. And that's what brings us here to today's workshop because um, school safety, which is under the purview of the NYPD is hiring. And uh, Ms. Simpkins and Mr. Wise are going to explain to you the process to become a school safety agent. And it includes a civil service exam. School safety agents are civil servants the same way that our school crossing guards are civil servants. So we're gonna jump right into it and uh, give the floor to Ms. Simpkins and to Mr. Wise um, to start to share with us um, more information about the application process, the salary information, and um, other details when it comes to being a school safety agent. So Ms. Simpkins, the floor is yours. Hello everyone, I'm back. So the process basically starts with you taking the school safety exam, which the filing date will be closing tomorrow. It's the last day to you know file to take the exam. Not exactly sure what date the exam will be given, but it starts with the exam, take the exam, pass the exam, you now become on a waiting list they give you a list and an exam number. And, you know, I guess as they start to hire and they get to your list and exam number, they'll call you and give you prompts from there. Um, basically, you're going to be waiting for words from the 
CAD, which is the candidate applicant applicant division. They'll be giving you your prompts and you know telling you where you go and where you move from there. And the process um, entails a lot of different things. So it basically you go through screening. The screening entails this part parts from um, you have to be 21 years old or older. That's number one first and foremost. You have to have at least a GED or a high school diploma. You must pass a drug screening. You must meet medical and psychological requirements. You must live in the five boroughs or the surrounding counties of New York City. You must be a citizen and can obtain special patrol status and keep that status throughout your employment. That's the first um, course of action as it pertains to, you know, getting into the gist of this job and you know, starting your career path with school safety. And when when she's talking about um, you, you must pass the background check. They do a very, very thorough background check. When when I first got on, it, it like bugged me out how far back and how deep they were asked. They asked you about fights you had in junior high school. I was like, are you serious? And they they but they were very thorough. So going back to what you said about uh, us being civil servants and things like that, um, we're, we're highly scrutinized to get this job. They're, you you just can't walk in off the street and have felonies and stuff like No, they do a very thorough, thorough background check. They, they're going to look into everything that you were involved in and, and make sure that they're just not having the wrong people go in the schools and work with our kids. And to um, put more onto what Harold said, it's not just you that doing a background check on, they're also doing a background check on members of your household, people who reside with you, members of your family to see what they're involved in, what they have done. They go back about 10 years. And if you were a juvenile and you had any type of sealed records, they want you to go and get those records released because they want to know what offenses that you had even as a juvenile. So it's your whole entire family unit and your household who are being investigated when you're being investigated to get this job. So yes, you can't just be Joe Schmo from off the street. You have to you know, they have to know everything there is to know about you, your character. And they ask you for certain things that you know, you, you'll be surprised that will come up. They will want you to get character references from your neighbors, people who live in your neighborhood to give character references as to you as a person to who you are. So it's an extensive, very extensive background check, very. And then, uh, as Ms. Simpkins was saying, you go after after you go through the background check and you go through all this. Now you're going to the academy, and when you're in the academy, you're in the academy for 17 weeks. And during those 17 weeks, you you go through extensive training. You um report writing, CPR, uh different coursework, conflict resolution. Uh, you work, you learn how to work with children in crisis. Mm -hmm. you, you get, you get hands on with a little of everything dealing within the schools. So we, we get extensive training and, and my favorite part, believe it or not, it wasn't for a lot of people, but my favorite part was the gym because they when they work you out because when you're in the schools you're busy depending on what school you're in you know kids get in conflict and you have to respond so you have to be able to go back and forth and respond to your to your uh co-workers and if they need help containing a situation you have to be in that physical condition to to assist them you got to be in that physical condition to assist the students if, if they're having an altercation or if they're having a child in crisis problem at that moment, you have to be able to respond and be there. So they make sure for that 17 weeks, you work out, you take care of yourself, you, you're physically fit. By the time you get out of there, trust me, you're in, you're in very good shape. Mm -hmm. So I missed that part, but you know, that, that was my thing. Yeah. 
17 so, weeks is very, very intensive. That's seriously thorough training um, that school safety agents have to undergo. Um, can, you, can you tell us a little bit more about the additional training, uh, conflict resolution, um, uh, security protocol training, such as like lockdowns, um, and then also training such as implicit bias training and uh, dealing with children who may be in crisis. All right, yeah. well, um, well yeah. so basically the coursework is a, it's a series of lessons. You know, when I was there, we had about 36 different lessons and those lessons were, you know, basically different types of report writing and investigations, you know, procedural law, effectively dealing with school-based issues, which are all the issues that arise in a school. There's, you know, child in crisis, people in crisis, people, people in emotional crisis, mental crisis, you know, mediation tactic, crisis intervention. You know, you also learn general response protocol, which are your shelter ends, your lockdowns, your evacuation drills. You know, we also have first aid triage training, which I always talk about, which is very important. You know, AED, which is automated um, defibrillator, you know, defibrillator, central defibrillation, CPR, um, you know, dealing with that, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Also, there's, um, I want to talk about, you know, there's different things that they have, like, so there's um, counterterrorism that people don't talk about, that school safety training we do get with counterterrorism that talks about the different levels of, you know, threats when the threats arise, because during 9-11, school safety was very intricate and, you know, dealing with the situation, because when it happened, it was during the school day, it was during the day, the school day, and no one talks about, you know, the heroes of school safety who were a part of the 9-11 situation, who made sure that, you know, kids were getting picked up safely. They were also, you know, they were sheltered in at their schools. They had to make sure that staff was taken care of and everyone, you know, was kept calm and remained calm. They also helped in the recovery effort down, you know, at the World Trade Center site. And that counterterrorism is, is very, you know, it's very interesting because when you have those different levels of threats and, you know, you have to know what are the appropriate actions that need to be taken. And that's a training that school safety also gets that people are not aware of. So God forbid, if you know we do is, you know, experience another terrorist attack, you know, look at the culture of what's going on today in Afghanistan. You don't you just know, you don't know. And that training is very, very, very much needed by, you know, the school community. And everybody else in the school community does not have that training. Not even the building, not even the building response team, but school safety does have that training. Also, you know, there's an um, apprenticeship with the Department of Labor where you can enroll in. So, you know, after two years of you no know, service with no, no incidents, you know, no, no type of you know, infractions, you know, you can receive a certification in law enforcement from the Department of Labor. You can now take that certification anywhere in the country and utilize it, you know, to say that, you know, you're certified as a certified law enforcement peace officer at what you do. And there's a lot of things that people, you know, they just don't really know about the training that um, is being given to school safety. Because when you're given that training, you're also getting that training it's law, police science, behavioral science. Um, you know, there's a physical aspect that he spoke about to make sure that you're physically fit to respond to said incidents because if you're running or you have to, you know, carry someone, you still have to be able to physically call over the radio. You still, you know, you not, don't be breathless. So that, that physical aspect is definitely needed. And, um, you know, there's also, you know, college credits that you receive for your training. You receive up to 26 college credits and I can break them down because, you know, they're basically, you're getting 15 semester hours with um, the college credits for the law and the science part, the police science. You're getting, you know, five semester college credits for your physical education and you're getting six college credits for your law and police science training as well due to criminal justice to go toward a degree, you know, from accreditation to a school that you can transfer it to. Wait, wait a minute. So the training that you do with the police academy to become a school safety agent, that training can actually be applied towards a college degree. Correct. Yes. Wow. Okay. I did not know that. Yes. Yes, yes it is. And, and a lot of a lot of agents on the job don't know this. So I'm making you know this this information for the agents who are here who are not aware of it. Also, for the agents who are, you know, looking, seeking to come on, they'll also be aware of it. And um, Mona's going to put up something later, you know, that you know, comes to the union, because anyone who's seeking to get a degree, the union offers tuition assistance. Up and yes, we actually, let's put up the slide of um, the um, um, the union um, 
the union program, the tuition reimbursement program, page one and page two uh, for the college credits. So as you can see here, um, and this is on the union's website, um, pool237.org, but as you can see, the higher education in just four steps where it breaks down how to apply um, and submit. Um, and then there's also the other page, page two, if we could see that, um, you know, and this is the part. It's for union members and their families. I mean, think about it, not just the parents, but their, their family members, their children. Um, this, is, this is a really, really great um, benefit in addition to all of the other benefits. Um, and I, I'd like Ms. Simpkins and Mr. Wise um, to talk about the benefits that come um, with this great career opportunity. Harold, I'll let you go. All right, well, you know, we have our dental uh, eye coverage and, and that's very important. You know, you, you always have to take care of yourself um you you have to like i tell people all the time you go to work but you have to make sure you're good because if you're not healthy you can't help your co-workers you can't help anyone else so our union gives us very good medical coverage and uh especially the i, I know our eye and our dental plans are very good also it's, it's better than a lot of the other coverages out there, for sure. But go ahead, Mona. I mean, Simpkins. Yes, for our local 237 members, which are our level ones, also our level threes, group leaders, or as we call them, level threes, what I would think they should be called sergeants. Well, basically, the, um, the union, which is local 237, covers your optical and your dental coverage. You are allotted a pair of eyeglasses once a year, you and your, your um, people who are dependent on, on, on your list. And your dental is basically free. You don't pay any out-of-pocket costs mm -hmm. for dental procedures and things that you need of that nature as long as you go to a, a, a dentist that's approved by the union, which is um, our union is billed through HealthFlex. So HealthFlex is our um, provider for our dental coverage. Those things you get 100% covered by the union. A lot of people think may not be aware, but it is, and every year you are entitled to a pair of eyeglasses, you and your dependents, and you are in, uh, entitled to any type of dental coverages as long as you are a health flex provider from the union. That's what I wanted to talk about. But some of the benefits are, you know, on this job, you get paid medical and, you know, um, paid night shift differential. And for people that don't know what night shift differential is, that's when you go over 6 p.m. in the evening up until 6 a.m. in the morning it's considered night shift differential. I'm not exactly sure what the conversion is on that differential for the dollar amount, but I do know the slightly higher amount than you would get for the regular day concessions. And I can also say that um, there is a differential increase from a level one to a level three. I don't know exactly what that increment is, but I, I can get it out and I can post it at a later date. You know, there's overtime opportunities when they're available, as well as we have a 457 or a 401k savings Roth plan that you can enroll in and anyone coming in now, well, I'm tier four because I came in, you know, years, years prior, but anyone that will be coming in now will be tier six. And that's on the SPO 25 pension plan from um, NICERS, which is the New York City Employees Retirement System that, you know, that's our our pension plan, our, excuse me, <laughs> our, our pension plan. And those are basically the benefits that you can get from this job, but there are also other benefits that you know it would take me all night to explain that you can get but you know you have to somebody sit down and actually tell you what they are but if you come on this job and you network and you get around with other people you will find out what those benefits are that you are awarded from this job also you can apply for grants from the nypd for education grants as well because you are a member of the nypd and you usually more than likely get those educational grants if you apply for them in a timely manner and you know where to find them at so those are some of the benefits that you get from this job I have a question, somewhat related. So we just had that, I don't know, what was the concert called? Open NYC concert, whatever, yeah. NYC open concert. Okay. The people checking, doing security for this 
NY Open NYC concert were school safety agents. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> school safety to the rescue. Please explain to me, New York City, the people in charge of security, security and checking everyone, the 30,000 people that came to that concert, when was it, Saturday night? Saturday. Saturday? Yes, Saturday. Yeah. Um, were checked by school safety agents because I saw the pictures in the, in the um, you know, in the news coverage. And I said to myself, but that's school safety. So, so <laughs> please explain to me how is school safety there at a checking people doing security at a concert? I'll let Harold take that and then I'll back them up. Okay. How can I put this politely? Well, I'm just going to be, yes. School safety, they know that we do our thing. They know we are the best when it comes to scanning and things of that nature. So we come in and we, we're captain save the day. I won't, I'll put it that way. We're, we're there to help. We're there to assist because they know that we're experts in what we're doing. So what they would consider that is a special detail. It, it wouldn't be like a regular school safety detail or a, a regular school safety overtime. They consider that a special detail because it's outside of the school. It's something to help the city. They 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 knew they needed the, the experts to come in and help them run things. And the agents went in and ran everything and, and they did their jobs. Uh, they went in, they, they had the scanners, they had the hand wands, they made sure everybody was doing what they had to do. And they went in and shut everything down and made sure everything went smoothly. So that's how I saw it. Go Miss Simkin. All right, to back up my, my partner in crime right there, let me just break it down to put it lightly. School safety is basically, you know, you have the military, you have the fully enlisted officers, and then you have the reserves. School mm -hmm. safety, we are the reserves for the NYPD. Mm -hmm. It is what it is, you know, and um, police officers not taking away from what they do, but they don't scan. That's not something that they, that they, you know, that's not their expertise. School safety, we scan every single day in the high schools, Every single day in the scanning facility, we are scanning. This is what we do. And we're scanning at a large volume because most high schools have 3,000, 5,000. Some have seven, 8,000 kids or 8,000 people plus staff and visitors. So we're scanning everybody. So that's a large scale of scanning. So if you get a team of school safety agents like they had at this event, you're going to get thousands of people. Who else would you call in to scan them besides the TSA? But you know the TSA is not going to leave the airport. So who's the best in the industry that NYPD has a scan in? Boom, school safety. So that's why we were there. Same thing, like I always tell people, we are a part of the public safety apparatus just for that reason, because when we're needed, they have to put us into incorporation. Every single day, look at what happened last year during the pandemic. Where were we? In the public. We were out there giving out hand, face masks, giving out sanitizer, giving out information, giving out you know everything that school safety does on a regular basis. While we're in our buildings, we took it to the street and we mastered what it had to be done. It's the same thing with the marathon, same thing with the, the PSAO games at the garden, the same thing with any, any open air concert where they're expecting a large volume of people. Who do you call? They call school safety because they know school safety are the scanning experts, highly effective at what we do. And we know how to do effectively to give the people what the department always talks about, courtesy, professionalism, and respect. We do that effectively because we're used to dealing with community on an everyday basis. So it's common for us. So that's why we were there more. So one of our viewers, Anthony Richardson, says uh, in the comments, as you can see, school safety also does the uh, NYC marathon and New Year's mm -hmm. Eve. Yeah. These yeah. are all considered out of detail, extra work. Yes. It's considered, it's considered a special assignment, special detail. That means it's something that you wouldn't do every single day. It's not part of your everyday, you know, um, Activity is not part of your everyday thing that you would do on your regular checklist. So, but it's something that you are certified and qualified to do. Mm -hmm. So it's a special assignment. And then you take that special assignment, i.e. the city comeback concert, mm -hmm. safety was there. Okay, that's, uh, that's very, very interesting. 
So there, there are so many benefits um, to this position. I especially like the, um, you know, the tuition program uh, for school safety agents and for their families. Uh, can you break down um, vacation and sick days for for someone that's just starting as a school safety agent? However you want to take that. I'll let you get that one. <laughs> I'm not a payroll timekeeper, but I did consult my payroll timekeeper and a few other people that I know do the time accruals. And it's it's like you get a day of sick and like 10 hours of, of vacation per month. And it accrues in a, a time bank. And mm -hmm. the agents have different amounts of time there. It's a different increments between one year to five years, and then from five wow. years to 10 years, and then from 10 years to 15. Like every five years is different. After 15 years, you get a longevity pay, which is a stipend for people that got 15 years and more. So um, the time accrual varies. It, it varies. And you know, no one's person's time bank is the same to someone else. It depends on the time that you need to take off for certain situations. So, you know, it, it changes at your five year mark. I don't have the exact numbers, but I know that it progresses and it, it gets bigger as you go on with your years on the job. And what you could, what also helps with school safety is when you do your overtime, you could put it in cash or you could put it in time. So you have some people that just. I'll take cash. No, but some people put everything in time. So, <laughs> Right. So she she may have like where she could take off for the four or five months straight and never have to worry. And then you have oh, a yeah. person like myself that I come to work like it was a time where I only was out once sick in three years. So you have occurred so much time that I could be out almost a year and I would still have sick time. Hmm. So that that's part of it also with school safety how how different people choose to maneuver and use their overtime and things like that to benefit themselves because some people may need the cash but some people just feel all right I'm all right with the cash I'm, I'm married I have I have a spouse helping in the house mm -hmm. so I could put this into time so if we want to go away on vacation I have enough time that I could go away like every few months and never have to worry. So that that's one of the benefits also in school safety. But there's also a cap on that time. You can't have just go 500, 600 hours. Once you get to a certain amount of yeah, time, true. I believe it's 245 hours. They now convert that time into cash anyway. So right. So they're not going to let you have maybe. over excess of time. Right. I know, I know people, they actually may take vacation. Like you, you have to get rid of some of this time because you, you have a little too much. So they, they have to go and they have to do what they have to do. Make a week away, and and they made it. Uh, they made their vacation like that. We're just but, giving you the gist of what we know. We're not giving you precise and concise. Like once I just said, we're not payroll time keepers. But I did consult them on some of these um, payroll questions that you threw at me because I didn't want to come in here and be completely, you know, out of the loop. But with that time of school, school safety does have a little bit more leniency and leeway than the average person, even, you know, when it pertains to police officers, even, even as it pertains to the DOE staff, because, you know, they have set play times where they have to take their vacations or, you know, they to certain times off where they can't take it. But, you know, school safety can actually ask for a vacation throughout the whole entire year if you have the time and they have enough people to cover you while you're on vacation. Right. So I have another question. What happens in the summer, like, you know, when schools are closed? Um, how does how does school safety work? Um, how is the schedule in the summer with so many schools closed? What happened? Go ahead, Harold. Well, in the summer, schools are actually still open. It's it's not yeah, as, it's not as busy as during the regular year, but schools it, it seems like schools are open 365 nowadays so you have more people that take their summer vacations that take their time off during the summer but you also have a lot of schools that have to still be covered during that time so you have summer school you have um 
uh, after school programs still going on. You have summer camps that's still going on. So they still need coverage within the schools during the summer. Mm -hmm. But like I said, you have more people and, and what, what they'll do, they'll take a roster and the supervisor and the, the XOs and everybody, they'll figure out, all right, how many people do I need in this school? How many people do I need here? Everybody will get together, they'll figure it out, and then people will take their vacation along that pattern. They'll they'll figure it out. Maybe you'll take two weeks this month mm -hmm. and maybe a week the next month, and that's how you get that vacation during the summer. Okay. So, so now I, I want to just circle back to the civil service exam. What is on this exam? Like what type of questions, what can, what, what can applicants expect to see on that exam? Do you have any, you know, pointers for people, advice when taking uh, the civil service exam to become a school safety agent? Can you guys go over, uh, give us a little bit more information about this exam? The funniest thing is, I think Simpkins will work this one better because I've been on the job so long, <laughs> I I didn't have that exam that they have now. Okay, so before I get to that, let me kind of um, backtrack a little bit. I'm going to jump right into that, that question, Mona. So mm -hmm. when, some, when the summertime comes, usually what happens is you have a bunch of schools in the community and you know, pre-COVID, every school was not functioning on the summer scale. So what happened was they would break those schools down and it would usually be one central school in the area that would have all those kids that had to go to summer school put into that building with that teaching staff, that, that school's administration, and it would all go to one building. All the agents would then be assigned to that building. So that's how they can do the summer pool for summer vacation because everybody's together all inclusively. They would rotate the vacation schedules. This is pre-COVID. And um, you know that's how that would usually run. And everybody would usually be in those particular schools that were the whole school for the summer. And you would have the summer camp there that was growing. You would have you know, summer schools and plus all the staff, plus the school safety agents would be into a breakdown. Because usually in the summertime is when they do most of the work in the buildings. But, you know, that was pre-COVID. Due to COVID, everybody's schools open now with the school being out for so long. And now they have summer rising. Just about every school was open from, you know, 8 to 6. You know, the whole city, basically. So it's kind of was hard for people to take vacation. And, you know, we got limited to two weeks of vacation because, you know, they, they didn't know what to do with people because they was, you know, so, they're so strained due to the attrition, the resignation and retirement. So we don't have a lot of agents and it was really rough. It's been really rough. And I'm going to just put it out there. This is what's going to happen come September. It's going to be even more, more difficult than what we have now. So that's why we're doing this forum to get people to try to be engaged, to come out here to try to make up some of these numbers because we are really depleted. The deficit is bad. So that's how that summer breakdown usually went, Mona. And they usually went according to the roster and they usually went according to seniority. We have more, whoever has more years got first pick or whatever they wanted. And that's just basically how it would be broken down amongst the higher ups and the bosses. Now to answer your question, the test itself, I also did not take this exam. I came before the test. The test came in 2008 and I was grandfathered in like everybody else. But I do know that there's practice tests online. You can type in NYPD school safety you know, exam and it gives you like a, you can get, get a mock test of it. Same thing with the NYPD um, police officer test. You can get a mock test. I did glance at it and I did peek at it. Most of it is common sense questions. Most of it is memorization skills. Most of it is just, you know, um, perception. So like they will have put up four tires and they'll ask you out of these four tires, which tire has a different, you know, marking or a different whatever. It's like, and then there's like the scenarios where they'll, have a photo and you look at the photo and there's things going on in the photo and they have you look at it for you know a time, a time frame and there's things going on there's like people in a gym and there's a time clock on the wall and this, the time is showed on the wall and then these things happen and so then they'll have a certain questions and they'll ask you well you know in this model what what time was on the clock and you know well, what was this person in the group that had the red shirt what were they doing but you know why they do that because when you're in school in a school safety and you're in an incident and something's going on Mm -hmm. I would I would say this: school safety looks at things differently than the average person in the school system. Teachers, staff, custodians, cafeteria people—you know, even you know people with street smarts—you know, you're always on high alert. But school safety's training, you know, we look at things differently. When we walk into a room, we're looking differently at what is in the room. 
you know, we see the things that most people won't recognize. That's why a lot of um, school safety agents, you know, they're certified in crime analysis because they can walk into your building like Harold and he'll tell you what you need as far as cameras, you know, as far as, you know, proper door coverages and different things that are needed because we look at things from a different scope. So that test is all about memorization, perception, and just plain common sense. Okay. And let me jump on what she was just saying, like with the with the crime analysis. Thus, we, we get trained, you go in for a course for that. And on that course, a, a lot of POs, a lot of uh, uniform officers fight to get that training because when you retire from the job, you could take that and people will hire you mm -hmm. to, to analyze their business and tell them what they need and what they could do to make their place more secure. Like I'm certified, I could go in and tell a person how to lock down their building and make sure crime or nothing is going on, make sure the, the, the doors are correct, make sure the windows are correct. So we get, like I said, specific training that uniform members also get. So it's, it's, it helps you down the road also. Mm -hmm. We have field intelligence agents who are certified in FIO, field intelligence officers who, you know, they gather information, they collect information, they have a data bank of information. So, you know, when you start to collect these information, you are able to put things together and you can see where hot spots are, where trouble spots are, and where, you know, incidents and things are happening in the same place in a pattern. So, you know, there's a lot of qualifications and certifications and training that school safety is, you know, endowed with, but people just don't know because they don't know. They don't. They don't really come in to, to find out what school safety is. They just see people in a blue uniform walking around the school and they don't know what these people, my people, are qualified and certified to do. Because I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm gonna say this, and like I said, I don't talk against anyone. You know, everybody who does a job, your job is important and you have a place and a purpose. But you know, the training that school safety gets is 17 weeks in the academy. So let's start looking at some of these you know, other law enforcement trainings that they get. You know, we know the police officers do six months. You know that. You know, um, corrections, they only have eight weeks worth of training. Eight weeks compared to 17 weeks of school safety. And I will always say this because, you know, a wise man once said <laughs> that school safety runs Rikers Island because, you know, school safety agents, a lot of us who come into the job that don't have, you know, um, college degrees, you know, the college credits or whatever the case may be, what have you, that two-year certification of being here and having that law enforcement apprenticeship you can go to corrections. Corrections will take you. Oh. And with that 17 weeks of training, you know, that's all kinds of training that they don't even have. School mm -hmm. safety agents go into corrections, into Rikers, and they make the best COs because we know how to deal with the public. We know how to deal with people in crisis. We know how to deal with all of these things that we're bringing things to that table that is corrections. And people will not tell you this, but I will tell you this. School safety is running Rikers yeah. Island. It yes. is. And, and to go back to like even the AED training and the CPR training, mm -hmm. that's very important because inside the schools and outside the schools on the perimeter, you, you have to be alert of things that's going on. I worked in a school a few years ago where uh, there was a domestic issue and a, a male attacked his his girlfriend and the baby and we had to respond to a woman that was stabbed multiple times and the baby was cut so we had to give the child triage and the mother triage and we saved the lady's life so you you learn the cpr you learn how to give mouth to mouth you learn how to patch people up until ems gets there so they can get to the hospital these are things that we are taught and it's very important. And like Simpkin said, a lot of people really don't understand. They think you just sit at a front desk and wave people in and look at your phone and, and chew gum. Like we have a lot that we do. We're certified to do a lot of different things, but I'm, I'm even going to come at it a little different than Simpkins. I feel anybody that comes into school safety you should really like kids 
you should like helping and working with the kids. That's why I'm there. I used to work on Wall Street. I wanted to do something completely different after 9-11. I went in, and, and the first school I went in was a District 75 school, and that school was, when I say it was off the chain, it was up in the Bronx on Boston Road. Um, it's called 186. And when I said my first day I walked into school, I saw a kid run across the hall, across the cafeteria, jump on the table and start humping the table. And I was like, what the hell did I get myself into? But as I went along and I saw like what was the different issues and the different needs of different kids, you grew, I grew to understand like a lot of these kids are super great kids. They just need guidance. They need people that will show them that they care. And and like I told you many times before, even the parents come in and they embrace school safety like we're part of the family because we see that you see their kids every single day. So when their kid is having issues. A lot of times those kids aren't going to the guidance counselors or the deans or anybody like they go directly to Miss Simpkins or Mr. Wise because they relate to us. They see us in the hood. I, I, I go out my house and I go to the store and I see a lot of kids that I see in the schools and they were like, I like, wow, you have one Jordans. I'm like, okay. Like we we have regular clothes also. We don't always you had a uniform, so you you gain this relationship with these kids. So my thing is, when you go in, make sure you're going into something that you can embrace. So I tell everybody, embrace these kids because yes. they're 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 some great kids out here, and a lot of them just need that guidance, and they need someone to show them that they care about them. So that that's a great part of this job that you can help guide. I, I've had kids that were in school with me that's now in school safety, that's now in regular POs. I know kids now that are, are firemen, nurses, and and when they first got into school, some of them were little baddies, but you showed them like I care about you. You don't got to be a knucklehead. You don't got to follow the nonsense. Do what you have to do. And and when they graduated, I had one kid that would not go to graduation unless I went with him, unless I went to his graduation. So you definitely affect a lot of kids. So if this is the job for you that you want, understand you're helping to mold a generation and helping to guide kids. And to me, that's important. 100%. I agree. Can't say it no better. But Mona, what I wanted to say was I have two stories. So the first one is Lily Love, who's an agent who used to be in my my patrol borough. She um had inboxed me. We had a you know back and forth about a situation last week where she was waiting. She's, she's not retired. She was waiting to go to her doctor's appointment when she saw a kid shoot past her car. And she said it was kind of alarming to her. Like, where's this kid going? So she got out ran behind the and snatched the kid and was like, you know, where are you going? And she realized that, you know, there was something odd about the kid. So let's find out what the oddness was. The child was autistic. So okay. it became a, you know, try to figure out what's going on. What she did was she used her school safety hat, school safety brain, called 911, mm -hmm. got patrol there, and they found out that there was a, a parent who called and said that her child escaped and got out of the house. So now due to her oh, calling yeah. and making that call and holding on to that child, they were able to now reunite that child with that parent. Once again, School safety does not leave you. Really, really, really good job. Now, also, I have another story, and I know she's watching because she's on here. I see her. So, SSS Gamble, which is one of my supervisors, you know, we talk, we have talks very um, quite often, and she expressed to me that, you know, the the desire to want to become a school safety agent was because she was mentored by her school safety agent, who was a person who was very, you know, intricate in her life and pushing her and, you know, making sure that she got something out of life and basically was like, listen, they hire me, get your butt down there and go get this job. And that was the influence that she needed to become a school safety agent, you know, and when she came to this job, she loved it. She's here. I love her. She's, she's one of my favorite people. You know, she's so down to earth. 
And I'm shouting out that school safety agent who paved the way for her and pulled her in. So, you know, we do have a lot of emphasis on these children's lives. Like Harry said, we do. And, you know, they can say whatever they want. And they can put the children at their hand, pick, to put up here and say negative things about us. But we know the general consensus of most children, they don't have a problem with us. Not at all. Not at all. So, I was, like you said, I want to just back up that point. You have to have a, a passion for children. You have to. You have to have a need to want to help children. You have to have a need because your job is children. Your whole job is centered around the children. That's the difference between a school safety agent versus a police officer because you're geared toward that school community and that school population are those children. And I wanted to say when you're in that academy, you know, you will be getting training from the DOE staff because they are also on hand. But what I was suggesting, and if anybody from the academy is watching and they're listening, is that you get a group of children who can be incorporated to that academy, you know, whole process. And, you know, the, the agents can hear the perspective from the children of what children feel about school safety or what children think or what they believe, you know, great school safety brings to the table or how they feel about their interactions with school safety. That right there would bring a whole nother level of understanding from the gate of what this job is. Because, you know, a lot of agents get the job Yes, it's a law enforcement job. That's the basis. But you have to understand that your job, law enforcement aspect, that's secondary. That comes with protecting those children. But your job is geared and centered around making sure that these children have a safe learning environment. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Simpkins. Thank you, Mr. Wise, um, for taking the time out this evening to talk with us and to share more information about this great opportunity of being a school safety agent. Um, I've been uh, getting messages throughout this um, workshop and uh, it's funny, but one of them comes from a friend of mine who actually is a, um, who, who, who's a, who, who's a doctor, PhD, well, sorry, ED, Edu, you know, ED in education, degree in education, doctorate in education. And, um, you know, she she texted me that, you know, these benefits are better than educator benefits. <laughs> <laughs> so it is, you know, it's this, this really and truly indeed is a great career opportunity um, with the tuition assistance, with the benefits for, um, you know, family members, uh, with the 457 plan, with the 401k plan, I, with the vacation, the sick days, and also the fact that your training that you're going to undergo um, can also be applied towards a college degree. So, you know, Jobs like this, careers like this, of you know, we we don't have careers like this anymore. And um, you know, the one thing I will say that, unlike many other careers, to be a school safety agent, indeed, you do have to care about the children, because your main job is to protect our children. Um, so I just want to thank you, Mr. Wise, Ms. Simpkins, for all that you're doing. I want to thank all of our school safety agents out there who protect our children every day unarmed. I know September is going to be crazy. The rest of the year is going to be crazy. I want to say in advance, thank you for all that you are about to do because the situation in our communities, the gun violence pandemic, we are under siege. Whatever is happening in the streets will spill over into the schools. All those teenagers being caught with guns, you know where they're gonna be once schools open. So I just wanna say as a parent, uh, thank you so very much for everything that you do. I also wanna say as a parent, Thank you to all our school safety agents for being patient with us parents, because I know I know we got some crazy parents out there. Um, but, 
you know, for our viewers and for everyone, please share this information. The application deadline is tomorrow at 11.59 p.m. You can go on um, nypdrecruit.com. When you get onto that page, click um, school safety and you can start the application process. Again, um, you know, we have a shortage of school safety agents. Um, we need more school safety agents. Even before the shortage, we needed more. Now, due to attrition, due to the due to the delay in the um, you know the class that was supposed to start a few months ago, um, you know it's now a severe shortage. But this is a great career opportunity. Uh, being a school safety agent opens up the doors to other careers in law enforcement. So, um, you know, I would definitely encourage folks uh, to apply, to definitely apply. And again, um, you know, the application deadline is tomorrow, 11.59. Go to nypdrecruit.com, click on school safety and apply and share this information with friends, relatives, and family members. And again, Ms. Simmons. Where you go. I want to yes. say thank you to Harold, my partner in crime, for always being there. Every time, no, no, no questions asked, asked to show up. He comes no matter where you say he's there. Mm -hmm. I, I just I can't thank him enough. Um, you know, Charlene Singleton who's not, you know, on she's not a very vocal person, but thank you to her. God bless her for being my my sister. Holding it down, getting the information out. Nicholas Polanco, Anthony Richardson for always being a listening ear and keeping me grounded. For you know Jessica Wallace, the goat of all, the greatest of all times in school safety, for just being a mentor to me and just giving me guidance on what the situation is. I also would like to thank Terrence Elmo, who hates to get on anything and speak, but that is tight, and he's always putting these things. We're getting that Elmo on. Don't worry. Yeah, he, puts We're together, get him. he puts together these. Oh, he's watching. He helps to put together these interviews with these different shows. Shout out to him, and um, certainly, last but not least, shout out to my sister Mona, who answered the call when we called and came through with the with the with the. The quickness with her, her cape on, ready to fight, like no questions asked. You are always there, Mona. I appreciate you from the heart. Also to, you know, Don Hugh and the Asian Alliance, to, you know, to, to Kakagni, to Sadio mm -hmm. Berry and the Senegalese Alliance, to and all of these groups, Maud Marin, to everybody who's in support of school safety, who comes out to the rallies, who came out to the rallies, who came to the forums, people who spoke. Um, I forgot the gentleman from the post who's always, Mr. Benjamin, who's always coming and he's always, you know, supportive. Anybody who's had any type of hand in this, this fight is just beginning. It is not over. And I'm appreciative of everybody at the coalition. I'm also in the middle of the coalition. And you know what? I just wanted to let the school safety agents know, my brothers and sisters in light blue, that the fight is on and it's not going to stop. No, that's right. You don't start nothing, there be nothing. You start something, there be something. So the fight is on. But again, Mr. Wise, Ms. Simpkins, thank you so very much. Folks, nypdrecruit.com, click on school safety, apply, apply, apply. So with that said, thank you again, um, everyone for joining us this evening. Please be safe and be well. Take care. Good night. Good night. Good night.